Hi everybody and welcome to another fine episode of South Polar Bust. My mission to create a research station at the North Pole of the St and the South Pole and strand a brave Kerbal at each. I'm going to be doing this without flying and also without any actual uh, driving input. All of the driving is going to be handled by my KOS system and the special script that I've written for this journey. So uh, to start off today, I want to talk about uh, my new course. I'm actually going to be going up the coastline here. I kind of decided after looking at it some more that this is probably the, the best way to go, the fastest way to go, and, and the, uh, the least perilous way to go. Uh, opening up my vessel today, I noticed that uh, some of my struts are kind of doing weird things. So I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem for me. Uh, I guess we'll see if my vessel breaks apart or what have you. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see what's new in KOS. Uh, if you haven't seen the video yet, um, the main things that uh, that are new are um, a lot of under the hood improvements. You're going to notice this when you're writing your white space. Um, it's going to be a lot more forgiving about how you do your white space. Uh, and the, uh, the other big thing is the mod interoperability. Um, I, uh, I started working on this feature a few weeks ago and uh, I think it, that it's finally gotten to a place where I can go ahead and release it, uh, which is great because I'm hoping that, uh, uh, that uh, Infernal Robotics will come out with, uh, you know, uh, using a lot of these bindings and then I can go ahead and create the giant uh, walking spider of death that I've always dreamed of. Uh, let's see, also this week we had uh, one great video by Check86 who created a cruise missile. Um, it's not perfectly accurate, but it is pretty amazing. One of the, uh, one of the fantastic uh, things about doing this mod is just, you know, seeing what the community comes up with and watching them blow me away because that's, that's what's been happening. There was another, uh, there was another video that I, I did see it when he originally posted it. It's by Stephen Madding. Um, uh, but for some reason, I, I just didn't have time to sit down and watch it. I just watched it before I started recording this and man, that was a, he made a descent script that actually watches the slope of the terrain to make sure that the slope that the script is trying to land on isn't too steep. And if it is too steep, it will steer to the side and try to avoid it. And I, wow. That, that script is amazing. Um, I think he's the first one to really come up with a descent script for the moon in the first place. And just the fact that it so intelligently, you know, tries to navigate the train is just fantastic. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the comments from the previous video. Uh, Mr. Mega Pussy Player says you should have attached a small fuel tank and a few Rocket Max 2477 for prograde acceleration to overcome ha harsh terrain. Um, the reason that I didn't include any rocket engines is because, you know, I, originally when I was looking at the way to, you know, how I wanted to drive to the South Pole, I was going to actually not go to the North Pole first and I was going to actually use jet engines to propel me over uh, the smallest body of water that I could find, right? Just, I was going to find the, the, the smallest distance that I would have to go over a body of water and I was actually going to fly over it. But then I thought, you know, how exactly do I differentiate what I'm doing, which is driving from flying? You know, if I'm flying part of the way, how is that different than, than just taking a plane there? And so uh, I, th I think part of the uh, the challenge here is is to drive there and it, you know it's kind of the the trendy thing that people have been doing and um, yeah I, I yeah I, I that's that's kind of why if I add any rocket engines to this then yeah I mean it might help but uh, I'm not so sure that that's not cheating so okay check 86 suggests labeling for the uh, labeling for the proposed button buttons on the bottom so he's talking about the buttons that i was proposing down here i was going to put uh, several numbered buttons that you could attach to in your scripts maybe some some leds that you could control uh, and he's suggesting actually putting a little maybe display there or um, just some kind of a display that you can change so you can actually label that button um i'm not against that but i 
I'm a little concerned that if I do put something down here that you can change that that might clutter up the interface here. Um, I'm sure that, you know, using the print add command, you can pretty much put a label anywhere you want. And, you know, I think people can make use of the bottom row. Uh, it's what I do in the editor. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure that's such a good idea. Uh, one, two to go, three, four says, be a jerk. Uh, he's referring to um, some of the features I was talking about in the first video where it was like, okay, well, if we do this, then maybe I'm being too much of a jerk. Like, uh, you know, like if there's a big delay when you're trying to send things or um, if there's, um, if I'm calculating the distance between you and the Kerbal Space Center instead of just the altitude when trying to calculate if you're in range of the archive drive or not. Um, uh, he goes on to say, uh, make this mod super hard. And he said that in all caps. And um, the thing is, there's a very fine line in just in any writing, any kind of game is there's there's a fine line between frustration and challenge. And writing a good game just comes down to finding out what the right balance between those two things is. It's not a matter of just taking the... Um, you know, taking the challenge and and multiplying it by 10,000, right? You know, um, you're just going to turn off people. I forget what it's called, but there's a, there's a psychological principle there that uh, when somebody comes across a challenge that they don't feel like it's even possible for them to succeed at, they're not more motivated to try. They're actually demotivated. So in that sense uh it makes the game less fun right when you're the fun in a game is when you're motivated to keep going and keep trying new things and part of that is uh is having some successes and having some failures you know and and having the sense that that if you continue trying at something that that it will uh work out so uh let's see here omaskery asks if scripts can be called from one another like functions. Um, yes, they can. And uh, why don't I go ahead and just prove that right now? So I'm gonna close the window on my main KOS unit and I'm actually gonna use one of these other units, which is which are the units that I'm gonna be dropping off at the poles. So I'll just open one of those and uh, we'll run a quick test here. So I'll declare parameter X. Uh, and then I'll just print X. And so that, that'll be my first program here. So run a one. Okay, so it printed out the one. Now I'll create a second program. Create a second parameter. Okay, so it'll just pass on the parameter to the second program and we'll see what happens. I'll give it a different uh, input there. And there we go. Now, unfortunately, you do kind of see that program ended statement twice, and that just prints whenever a, a program ends, and I didn't really put anything in there to check if um, if there's another program running as well and to just ignore it. Um, it's something I will put in, because a lot of people, I think, are, are struggling with that, struggling with all of these extra um, program ended statements. That was actually in Stephen Matting's video. Um, his script was just, printing one or one after another of those because he had subscripts that he needed to call. Um, so that's definitely something I want to take care of for sure. Uh, let's see here. Dr. Tedastro, I think that's what he's saying. Um, the change log in the wiki shows you can now get the distance to an arbitrary lat long with distance. How is this dis distance being computed? Is it hardwired to current body? What about elevation? Uh, so what he's referring to is um, the method that I'm actually using to, to calculate this right here um, is just, uh, you can just type in a lat long, lat long go colon distance, uh, and it'll give you the distance between your craft and that lat long. Um, and so the way that works is it, uh, it finds what the, the, the position in 3D space is that that thing should be at. Uh, and then it just simply calculates a straight line between you and that thing. And uh, because we're talking about just arbitrary lat longs and not actual vessels, it will assume that uh, 
that the target in question is at the same altitude that you are. So in the case of my waypoints, um, they are at the same altitude or they're roughly at the same altitude that I am. So that works out. Uh, but they kind of get less um, less accurate if you're trying to do one that's a far ways away. Because um, say that I'm looking at a lat long that's on this side of the planet. Well, the distance between me and that position as a straight line is a lot less than the distance of me traveling over the surface to that position. Um, it's something that I'm not entirely sure at this point how to fix. Um, well, I, I, I do kind of have an idea. I just need to sit down and do it. Uh, I just need to calculate basically the circumference of the planet, right? Um, when traveling in that direction. So, or, or the portion of the, the circumference that I have to travel to meet that target. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a lot of people were happy about me fixing the radar al altitude and this is a problem that was just it just came bundled with with ksp that way um, when you look at the radar altitude value it tries to find the distance between you and the terrain that you're over top of and when you go over the boundary uh over top of the water it kind of just curves off uh and then and then it goes below a certain point and it, it just doesn't bother anymore and it's not really useful for anybody to know what the distance between them and the bottom of the ocean is so basically what i said was if it ever goes low enough that you're below sea level then just use sea level because that's what people are going to be interested in if, if they're landing in the water um and also the other problem was if you went above 35 thousand feet i think it was actually i think that when i went actually went to test it the it, the actual elevation that that would occur at would change so but when you went up high enough for some reason the answer would go negative again i don't know why um i think maybe just when you go at a high enough altitude uh, they the code they've written to detect your radar altitude just kind of it just can't handle it i don't know I don't know what's going on there. So basically I just added some code that in some cases substitutes the regular altitude for the radar altitude when the radar altitude doesn't make sense. And I think that's working well for people. Uh, I got some feedback on the forums that uh, this was going to simplify some people's scripts. So I'm happy about that. I think that that's working out well. You may notice that that we're closing in on the distance pretty quickly here, and that's because after the last video, I realized that uh, that it's hard to sit down and talk for 40 minutes. La that's how long la the last video was, was 40 minutes, and I could just barely find enough stuff to talk about during that time. So this time I calculated a distance that was a little under half. So we're almost there, so I better hurry up and finish here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kavik Flygarn87 writes, yay, 0 0.7. When will it be able to access RCS for docking? Um, so right now there's no way to, to kind of, you know, RCS strafe, like, you know, use docking, um, docking controls for, with the RCS. It's something that I've wanted to put in for a long time, but something you kind of have to be aware of is that I don't think that KOS has everything it needs to actually execute docking yet. Um, basically, you would like uh, MechJab uses um, MechJab has you target, I think the the docking port that you're that that the other vessel, the docking port on the other vessel is what you ha what it has you target, and um, we actually don't have the ability to do. Oh wait a second, what's going on here? My distance is increasing. Why is that? Uh, it looks like I'm pretty... No, I'm definitely driving... Okay, let me break this. What is going on here? You know what? The way, <laughs> the way it just kind of died there, I think what, what, what's happened here is sometimes... Um, sometimes when driving especially with this particular car, it uh, doesn't seem to be able to get enough steer when it's moving at high speeds. Uh, hmm. Okay, well anyways, back to the docking thing. Um, so I think MechChip has you, it has you targeted 
a, a docking port for you to dock with and it has you control from the docking port you want to use to dock and then it does some crazy calculations that that tell it how to line up with that and, you know and there's that other mod that that other docking alignment mod whose name i can't remember right now which i think works the same way i don't think we have any of the stuff yet that you would need to do that um we also don't have really although that although stephen matting wrote that awesome docking script or that awesome descent script we also don't have anything that'll get you to the moon yet so there's definitely a lot of holes that i want to address um, a lot of these big questions of how do I actually, I, I think it'll be a great day. The, the, the day that somebody posts a video saying I am the first one to, to run a mission from beginning to end, completely automated, land something on the moon with my hands off the keyboard. I think that'll, that'll be really awesome. And I, I can't wait until we get to that point. I'm just going to try to reduce my speed here without ending the script so that I actually because it looks like it's having trouble steering again. I wonder what I need to do about this. Hmm. Okay, well, now we've reached waypoint two. So um, until next time, hack responsibly.